Uh, empty your pocket, man. Jesus Christ. You heard me, come on. Empty your pocket. I... Uh, uh, What the hell is that? This? Oh, well, I'm glad you asked. This is the Lave Micro Deck, although I'll call it the U Deck just for ease. And it is a discreet R2R deck that, as you Stop. just saw, can fit in my pocket. I was quite a big fan of Lave's Harmony Deck and their HP 2A amplifier, but both of those were pretty expensive, so I was pretty excited to take a look at something a little more affordable, given as this is under a thousand dollars. Forget it. And I should. Oh, okay, well, you should know this too. Everything that we do on this channel is made possible by headphones.com. And if you want to buy with confidence, thanks to their 365 day return policy and excellent customer service, then consider headphones.com for your next audio purchase. Did you say 365 days? Yeah. A year? Yeah. How, and why the hell are I even robbing people? What the, Jesus Christ, oh my grandma, oh man. So what exactly is the UDAC and how does it compare to its bigger brother, the Harmony? Well, the UDAC, like the Harmony, is a discrete R2R DAC. In fact, it's actually using the exact same R2R modules as the Harmony and shares quite a bit in common when it comes to the overall behavior of the DAC. But clearly, this is quite a bit smaller, significantly cheaper at just under $1,000, excluding shipping and, well, tariffs if you live in the US. But what is actually being cut down to get to this price and size and what do you get for your hard earned money? Well, we'll talk through the measurements, the sound quality, but let's start with the build. On the outside, it sports a matching build and aesthetic to Lave's higher end products, and I have to say, build quality is really one of the things that Lave does especially well. There are silver and black variants available, and a nicely done matte finish, and engraving of the logo on the top, the text on the camphered edge. The controls, and even some of the screws on the back, are gold, which, particularly with the black variant, I think strikes a nice balance. It gives it a luxury aesthetic, but doesn't let the gold be too much or lean in towards being gaudy. And one particular difference actually that I was really happy to see between the Harmony and this was the lack of spiked feet. Instead, going for rubber-bottomed feet, which personally I'm much more of a fan of. I'm not super keen on spiked feet just because it makes it much more likely that you're going to scratch stuff much nicer. Despite the size, the I.O. is also quite comprehensive, with optical and coaxial SPDIF, USB and I2S inputs, but the one distinctly lacking output is single-ended analog outs. It only has balanced XLR. Now, Lave does say in the manual that you can use an XLR to RCA adapter to feed a single-ended device, but I do want to say, usually this is a really bad idea, because most balanced to single-ended adapters will short the negative polarity to ground, and this can damage your device either instantaneously or over time, and even if it does work, as is the case here, the device isn't going to perform its best. Please do not try to adapt the balanced output of a device to single-ended unless the manufacturer explicitly says that it is okay to do so, and even if they do, make sure that you pay attention to any particular recommendations they have in terms of pin configuration. Some devices you can do this, but only if you leave the negative pin floating, whereas again, most adapters will just short it straight to ground. I did measure the UDAC both balanced and single-ended, and and with the balanced output, we do get about minus 85 dB total harmonic distortion and noise, but using the balanced to single-ended adapter, this drops about 11 dB to minus 74 dB with higher harmonic distortion and more power supply noise. So even though it does work, I wouldn't recommend using a balanced to single-ended adapter with this if you can avoid it. And again, to reiterate, with other devices, do not try to adapt balanced to single-ended because you do risk damaging your DAC. You are shorting it. That is not good. And even if it does work, it is not going to be performing as well as it otherwise could because you're putting massive stress on the output stage. Anyway, let's take a look inside this. The UDAC has a pretty compact design, no surprise given the size of this unit, but despite that compact size, it still includes some nice additions like galvanic isolation between the digital and analog sections, which I did test and it does seem to work very well for preventing noise from the PC, even if I had it running Furmark and Prime95 at the same time from getting through to and affecting the performance of the DAC, so that's excellent. One other change that I was quite happy to see on the UDAC versus the Harmony was the inclusion of a dedicated output stage, because the Harmony didn't actually have one. 
and that meant that the output impedance was very high, over a thousand ohms on the balanced output. Now, usually that's not a problem. Most amplifiers will have a 20, 50, or maybe even a hundred thousand ohm input impedance, and so even using a 2,000 ohm output impedance DAC, you're not going to have any problems. But in the headphone space in particular, a lot of the amps that are prioritizing Synad over everything else, one of the things they sacrifice to do that is input impedance. A topping a 90, for example, has only a 2,000 ohm input impedance, and that means that using a DAC like the Harmony with it might cause some problems. But the UDAC has a dedicated discrete Class A output stage on the underside of the PCB, and the output impedance is drastically lower, so you can use it with any amp you like, and you're not going to have any problems. The overall objective behavior of the UDAC is very similar to the Harmony in many ways. Looking at some examples side by side, there are a lot of similarities in areas like the linearity, distortion versus level, but the Harmony does get nearly 10 dB lower distortion and noise. They're using the same R2R modules, but the Harmony has a better power supply, more internal isolation, filtering, and just generally seems to outperform the UDAC in most areas, even though the general profile of behavior is very similar. Although I'm not too sure what's causing this pair of humps in the noise floor around 5.5 and 7.5 kHz though, as that's not present in the Harmony. The one area of performance that definitely seemed to be a notable step down on the UDAC was the jitter or clocking performance. The UDAC has some strange jitter or phase noise going on at about 6.4 kHz that again was not present on the Harmony. Though the fixed deterministic jitter spikes seem to be very similar in level and profile to the Harmony. And I did actually try running the UDAC with the UDDC to see if that improved things at all, but the behavior was pretty similar. You got the best performance by using USB directly to the UDAC. I2S from the UDDC with local clock selected on the UDAC had slightly higher jitter than just using USB, and then selecting external clock on the UDAC slightly increased jitter further. So I'd recommend just using USB input with the UDAC since that's what gives you the best jitter performance and it's already got internal galvanic isolation. And if you'd like to see full measurements of the UDAC or in fact the Harmony, those are available at the links in the description on the audio file section of headphones.com. So, is the UDAC a Harmony in a smaller box? Well, no. Whilst there are a lot of similarities in behavior, the Harmony is a demonstrably higher performing product. But how much do those differences influence the sound, and is the performance difference between them enough to justify the difference in price? In my subjective evaluation of the UDAC, I did find that this does sound very similar to the Harmony, and at this price point, this is a really compelling option. In fact, because most of what I said about the Harmony can just be applied to the UDAC as well, I'm actually going to focus mostly on comparisons in this review, because it's much more useful to talk about where the differences between this and the Harmony are, rather than just repeating what I said in the Harmony review, and also to talk about some comparisons between the UDAC and other similarly priced products, and what else you should be paying attention to. Let's start with just raw detail. You do not get the same level of detail retrieval on this as you do on some other products like the SMSL Raw DAC or Raw Pro DAC as well. I think that both of those are more detailed and more neutral in presentation, and they are quite a bit cheaper. But again, much like the Harmony, what I find really enjoyable about the UDAC is that it's a warmer, more lush presentation, and that's something that is not all that common in lower priced DACs. A lot of the time DACs at or under $1000 are not just using the same ESS or AKM DAC chips, but also nearly identical designs in other areas, nearly identical analog stages for instance, as well as the chip. And I have found that a lot of the particularly ESS Q2M variant ones, the mobile chip ones, even though they're in desktop products, can lean towards more of a clinical sound that whilst good in an analytical sense, is just straight up not as enjoyable to listen to for me. The UDAC does sacrifice some detail retrieval compared to the SMSL Raw Pro DAC, but what you get in return is, to my ear, a more natural, realistic presentation to both vocals and instruments, and in particular, a much better presentation of spaciousness and soundstage. That is a stereotype that is often applied to R2R DACs, and I really do think it holds true here. This DAC stages excellently, and tracks like Troubles What You're In by Fink are beautifully open sounding and have greater variation in the depth compared to the more wall of sound effect I get with the SMSL Raw DAC. Since this is an R2R DAC, you can also choose to use the UDAC in NOS or non-oversampling mode, or to enable internal oversampling. 
And personally, I much preferred the oversampling mode on the UDAC. And um, that's just because NOS is inherently quite a bit warmer than oversampling. Not just on this DAC, on any DAC. Non oversampling, it's not a hardware thing, it's just how the maths works out. You end up attenuating your upper treble by about minus 3 dB at 20 kHz. So, regardless of the DAC, it's just going to sound a fair bit warmer. And the extra warmth from NOS, plus the inherently warmer character this DAC has, was just a little bit too much when you put them together. So, Plugging and playing, I much prefer the oversampling mode on this. Some people are going to like NOS, so do try them both though. But it is nice to have NOS for when you want to do high performance external oversampling with a Chord M Scaler, PGGB, HQ Player, something like that. And actually, I'll link to my recommended HQ Player settings for the UDAC in the description below. The talk of oversampling leads me quite nicely into what is likely the most direct competitor to the UDAC, the Hollow Cyan 2. Both of these are discrete R2R DACs with reasonably similar price points, and the overall answer to which of these is better is simply, it depends. Personally, I think that the Cyan 2 is the better DAC in terms of the actual DAC hardware. Comparing the two like for like, either running both with non-oversampling or feeding them the same data from HQ Player, the Cyan 2 is consistently more detailed, it separates things better, and it's a little bit more punchy and dynamic. It's just an overall upgrade. But the Cyan 2 does not have internal oversampling, and that means that if you're not going to use a tool like HQ Player, you have no option but to use it in NOS. And so that's going to attenuate your upper treble, and particularly for some of the transient heavy genres, electronic music, really percussion focused stuff, it can diminish the overall quality of the result you get. NOS is just quite a warmer, softer sound, and not having the option to do any internal oversampling is a bit of a problem. When just listening to either of these DACs standalone, the difference between non-oversampling and oversampling is a bigger difference in sound than the difference in sound between the two DACs themselves. Having oversampling built in on the UDAC is great because it means you can just plug and play. But the Cyan 2, if you are willing to use an extra tool to do oversampling, can give you a better quality result. And objectively speaking, the Cyan 2 is also quite a bit better performing. So between the Cyan 2 and the UDAC, there isn't an easy answer, it's just a question of quality versus convenience. What about versus its big brother, the Harmony? Almost everything I said in the Harmony review can be applied to the UDAC. It is extremely similar, and you can hear when listening to them that they absolutely share the same core DNA. There's two main subjective differences when A being the Harmony and the UDAC. The first of which is that the Harmony is just a little bit more detailed, a little bit more incisive. Not a big jump, but noticeable. And the second thing is that the Harmony seems to be able to present distance and the location of elements with a little bit more... Well, I guess the best word I can use is focus? If the Harmony had a particular drum or guitar locked in place right here, the UDAC is just a little bit more hazy, a little bit less, yeah, focused. And I'm not sure how much of this is to do with the difference in jitter and timing performance between the Harmony and the UDAC, or how much of it is due to the fact that the Harmony does seem to be a little bit more detailed, particularly in the upper treble areas where a lot of that airy spatial cue stuff lives. I'm not sure. But just to be clear, this is a direct comparison, and both of them are excellent in this regard. The stereotype about R2R spatial presentation definitely applies here, and the UDAC happily beats the Hyperman EF400, the SMSL Raw DAC, and in fact, again, in spatial presentation is not that far away from the performance I get with the Ferrum Wandler. I don't want the comparison to the Harmony to come across as being negative towards the UDAC, it's not. The fact that it's as close as it is in performance to the Harmony, which I really liked and at a substantially lower price, is very much a compliment, and does make answering the question of is the Harmony worth the extra money a little bit tough to answer. Is the Harmony a better DAC than the UDAC? Yes, objectively and subjectively, but it really isn't a huge gap. The UDAC does get you a good 80% of the way there for a third of the price, and we are very much in the realm of heavy diminishing returns. If you are comfortable spending a fair bit more money, there are upgrades to be had with options like the Harmony or the Wandler, but for under $1,000, I personally would happily take this over most of the similarly priced options. The only other DAC that I'd say may be worth getting instead of this at a nearby price would be the Hollow Cyan 2, and that's only if you are happy to use some form of external oversampling in Rune, Fubar, or ideally HQ Player. I can definitely see some people preferring the SMSL Raw DAC though, if you would prefer to get some extra detail with the trade-off of not having quite as good an overall spatial presentation as this. This is a fantastic product. It's built beautifully, it sounds great, and being this compact is a really nice bonus. I'm personally not all that bothered about the lack of single-ended output since even really affordable headphone amps usually have balanced inputs nowadays anyway, 
And so overall, I feel pretty positive about the UDAC. This isn't a flagship killer by any means, nor is it a Harmony in a smaller box, but at this price point, this is a really nice option and gives you a different flavor from most of the other options close to this price point. I think the two main reasons that you wouldn't want to get this would be either if you want something that is closer to neutral, you're not looking for a warmer sound, in which case there are other options that will suit you better, or if you are willing to use a tool like HQ Player, the Cyan 2 does have a higher performance ceiling. If you are wanting a warmer sound and you don't want to fuss with extra tools, and especially if you want something that can fit in your pocket, the UDAC gets a thumbs up from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions you wanted to ask about anything mentioned in this video, music, DACs, amps, headphones, gear, anything at all, then come and say hey on the headphones.com Discord server or the headphones.com forum, and I and other wiggly air enthusiasts will endeavor to help. Until next time, I'm Golden Sound, you're watching The Headphone Show by headphones.com. See you next time.